everybody, this is Bridget Harrington, and you are listening to the We Want Arts Podcast, where I interview a variety of individuals in arts education and the entertainment industry to explore the necessity of arts education. Today, we are thrilled to be joined by Meredith Patterson, an accomplished Broadway television and film actor. Shannon and I first met Meredith during the national Broadway tour of White Christmas, in which Shannon played Susan Waverly, and Meredith played Judy Haynes, a role that she actually originated on Broadway. Shannon and I were also able to work with Meredith in her charitable concert, Curtains Up for a Cure, which raised funds for the Huntington's Disease Society of America. Meredith's credits also include the Broadway revival of 42nd Street, uh, The Boyfriend under the direction of Julie Andrews, All My Children, Boston Legal, and the Princess Diaries 2 film. Meredith, thank you so, so much for being here with us today over the phone. It is such a treat to have you. Oh my God, you're so welcome. And thank you for asking me. I'm so happy to be here. Well, Meredith, let's just get right into it. So you have reached the highest heights uh, of theater originating roles on Broadway, television, film, recordings. You truly do it all. So I I just, I want to know where your love for the arts originated and, and what made you become interested in it. Oh God, this is, um, this is going to be a long answer and, and a good answer. And thank you for, uh, it's interesting. Sometimes I forget that I, <laughs> not that I forget that I did Broadway, but I forget all the things that I've done because I've been in this industry for over 20 years and I just keep going because I'm so curious. And that really is what started Um, my love of the arts. I really feel like, um, you know, both my parents, my mom wanted to be a dancer and my dad is a jazz musician. So I was raised with movie musicals and jazz in my house. And I'm one of four kids and we all were just exposed to this very musical um, household. And my mom started dancing, um, you know, to to lose her baby weight. And I'm the youngest of four. So I was always coming to the dance studio to see my sisters and brothers dance. And and as she said, I was dancing in the womb. So I kind of just have always been dancing. I started tapping when I was uh, two and a half, which seems super early. <laughs> so it was like I started to walk and then I started to tap. And with my dad being a drummer, a jazz drummer, he used to drill my time, which means like he used to make sure that I kept, you know, kept it in the pocket for using a, a drummer reference um, in terms of my rhythm and my dance. And you know, I just kind of went from there. I, I, I've wanted to always do everything. I have never really wanted, wanted to limit myself. If there is something in the arts that I'm curious about still to this day, and I'm, you know, in my early forties, I still want to learn something new. And I think that, um, that thought process for an artist and and for just a person in general, I think is really smart to always be curious about something that lights you up and arts and, and entertainment and dance and singing and all of it, even doing my own podcast now, Confessions of an Actress, I everything involved in the entertainment industry, I am curious about. And that is really where all of that has spawned from and continues to. Well, you know, on this on this podcast, Shannon and I advocate for the importance of arts education. Um, so I, I wanted to ask you what your what was your first experience with arts education, whether it was in school or, or through private lessons. What was your first experience with arts education? Well, my first experience was obviously my parents, as I mentioned before, but, you know, outside of the house, I was lucky enough to have a lot of really incredible teachers and not only um, teachers in, in dance, like extracurricular dance class and theater class, but I had a community in Northern California where I was raised that was very, very into the arts, not as much as I would have liked. And now going back and now having done Broadway and have toured the country and the world in terms of um, arts education, I think that what I had was, was good, but I was also seeking it. There wasn't enough of it in my, my hometown of Pleasant Hill, California. But the people that, um, that really stand out are my, my, my drama teacher, Gail Brewer, who uh, just recently retired, but she's an incredible, was an incredible drama teacher in my school. And also Lois Grandy, who was my first ballet teacher. And she came from New York. She actually was a dancer in New York. So thank God she decided to move to Northern California and open up 
Performing Arts Academy, and um, I had a uh, tremendous, tremendous education there. But, you know, it's one of the things that I feel like gets cut the most, and I'm sure you're probably going to speak to this a little bit, but um, in terms of the the funding for it and in terms of it being in schools and being in communities, I feel like it's something that people think of as extracurricular. And I have to tell you, it is something that fueled me, that helped me with my organization, with my discipline, with my teamwork, Arts education in my life, this is going to dance, theater, all of it, um, really did shape who I am in terms of my ability to just um, contribute to society, (laughs) to be blanketed. It really, uh, even if I didn't go on to do um, all the things I've done in the entertainment industry, it has taught me so much. I think it's so necessary. And I luckily had such great teachers as a kid. Well, and I, I want to turn to, to something uh, that's related to that now. So one of the one of the greatest things to me about the arts is that we're constantly being able to learn from one another uh, by working with other performers. And as you said, we're able to continue to learn and, and improve our craft and, and stretch ourselves. And I know that my sister Shannon certainly became a better actor having worked with you uh, oh. on the national <laughs> on the national Broadway tour of, of Irving Berlin's White Christmas. She learned many things from you and just being able to work alongside her taught her many things about acting as an art form and, and the, the industry in general. So, um, and, and in that sense, there's a really unique pedagogical aspect of theater uh, that we've experienced, my sister and I. So I want to talk to you about some of your, your teachers and mentors that you've worked with. And, you know, among the many legendary people that you've worked with, uh, you, you performed uh, as Polly Brown in The Boyfriend in 2003 uh, under the direction of Julie Andrews. So I've, I've always wanted to know, what was that like? And what, what did you learn from her? Oh, my God. Um, well, I love hearing, uh, hearing that I was some kind of um, inspiration for Shannon. And, and, and you and I have worked together in a, in a benefit, as we mentioned um, before. I, you know, one of the things that is so awesome about this industry is the ability to work with people who you grew up watching and who are legendary. And when I was cast in The Boyfriend, you know, I auditioned for that show because I was told by my mentor, Lois Grandy, that I would be really good for the show. And um, so when I saw that it was auditioning and I saw it was Julie Andrews was going to be making her directorial debut, I thought, can I get an audition just so I can sing for her? I don't think I'm going to book it, but I just want to be able to be in the, the same room with her and get the chance to say that I sang for Julie Andrews. So a little bit of an egotistical thing there, but I wanted to... Um, I, I really just wanted to audition. I didn't think I was going to book it. And when I actually was cast and I was cast in the role of Polly, which was the lead, which was the role that Julie played when she made her Broadway debut in 1954, I called up my, my mentor Lois and, you know, who told me to audition for it. And I was like, Oh my God, Lois, I booked this. I I booked, uh, you know, the show, the boyfriend, I'm so excited. And she goes, Oh my gosh, you, you're going to be such a great Maisie. And I said, what do you mean Maisie? And she said, well, that's the dancing lead. That's the the role that I thought you'd be perfect for. And I said, no, I'm going to be Polly. And she goes, you're going to be Polly. Oh my gosh. That's so much pressure. And she didn't mean it. (laughs) I know she didn't mean it in a way to make me extra nervous. I was already nervous with the fact that I was going to be playing um, Julie Andrews part and she was going to be directing me. Um, you know, it, it, it goes to show, goes back to the, the question you asked before about being a triple threat um, and, and developing my, my voice. I was, I was cast in a role that I, in my head, thought that I was not going to be able to rise to the occasion because it was Julie Andrews. You know what I mean? It was, um, was going to be compared to her. No matter what I did, I was going to be compared to her. My voice was going to be compared to her. And so I went into the 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 process of doing that show with all of that on my shoulders. And this goes a little bit to the mental aspect of this business. You have to know that the people who cast you, whether they're Julie Andrews or, or, or just any other amazing person in this business, they're casting you because they believe you can do it. So you have to believe as well. So I had to walk into it with all of this um, mental shift of, I can do this, I can do this. And Julie, uh, who has become a friend, 
Um, she completely with open arms enveloped me into this role and into guiding me into doing this show. And, uh, she became a mentor to me in a different way. Um, because we all grew up loving her and, and, and knowing her in all the ways that she has been in this industry. You know, I, 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 whenever I would see her face, I would see Mary Poppins and I would see, you know, Maria, I would see all these iconic roles that she's played. And really she's just, you know, Julie Andrews and she would show up in a baseball cap and, and stretch pants and just, you know, would just go, hello, welcome. Like, how are you? And she would just have this wonderful energy about her as she is exactly who you would want her to be in real life. She is exactly the, the most loving, wonderful person that she is. And from then on, she, um, you know, she did some incredible things for me. She got me uh, an audition with Gary Marshall for the film Princess Diaries 2. And I didn't know years later that they actually talked about developing a character for me for that movie because she wanted me to be in the movie so badly. So um, my character of Lady Alyssa Wells in that movie, uh, Wells is actually Julie's um, Julie's true last name. That was her last name of her of her father. So she could, they, her and, and Gary Marshall created that part for me. And, uh, you know, so I, I, I mentioned that not to drop names or drop that movie or any of that, but it was, it was her generosity of even making that phone call and having that idea, um, that sparked such a, a, a friendship and, you know, a guidance that I, I could only dream of as a, as a young kid and, and as, and as a, um, artist in this industry. Well, well, that's a beautiful story. And I, I honestly cannot think of anything more intimidating than playing <laughs> ju- the role that Julie Andrews played uh, in front of her and working with her on it. So I, 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 I think that that is, that's just so intimidating to me, but you really rose to the challenge and I mean, earned her respect and it just opened up so many doors for you that that's, it a was a, story. it was a, Yes, it was a challenge. And it was also, you know, I'd already starred on Broadway at the time. So I'd already had that pressure, but nothing was like this because it was Julie. And it also was, you know, the show didn't end up going to Broadway or off Broadway as they wanted it to, but it, everybody in the New York theater community came out to see the show in the Hamptons. That's where we did it. And I remember the stars showing up and, you know, the people that I saw there, like Billy Joel, Alec Baldwin, all these people in the audience that on top of also Julie Andrews there every night watching the show, but she never, you know, this is the thing. She was never negative. She was always, you know, guiding me and helping me. And I, and speaking of pressure, that was when I stopped reading reviews of myself. I didn't want to know when the reviews came out, I wanted to know if they were good or bad, but I didn't want to know specifics because I didn't want to be, um, you know, uh, torn apart and then having to go on stage and trying to do this role. But, uh, I was pleasantly surprised with, um, the positive reviews and the, the, um, comparison to Julie, which I will, I will hold dear in my heart forever with people saying that I, um, you know, it was a nod. It, it, it was a, a tip of my hat to, to Julie Andrews. And, and she was very, very, um, so, so proud of me. And I really only needed her approval, which as she would say, you don't even need my approval, but it was, I couldn't have been guided by a better person in that pressure moment. Well, I want to turn now to the ways that you and and other artists use the arts as a force for good as 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 we mentioned we were able to work with you on the uh benefit concert that you produced the curtains up for a cure which raised money for the huntington's disease society of america and i know through my own experience engaging with the broadway cares equity fights aids initiative that was one of my favorite parts of being on broadway so i i just i just want to know if you could talk a little bit about the ways that learning a skill in the performing arts like singing or acting is actually being used in the Broadway community to create real change and and positively impact people's lives. Absolutely. And that is one of the greatest things. It's a it's I always call it a side effect to this industry, but it is something that is a um, a very powerful force that you can use or not use. Some people don't use their 
their fame or their notoriety as, as little as it may be or as big as it may be to do good in the world. And I have always been a person who has wanted to give back. And like you mentioned, um, the Huntington's Disease Society of America, uh, Huntington's disease is something that runs in my family. I watched my um, uncle die of it and my cousin die of it and my grandfather um, and my great aunt in my family um, passed away from Huntington's disease. And it's not a very well-known disease. And I say that meaning like there's not a lot of attention on it. So I, I took whatever um, little fame that I had in New York City to do these these concerts for um, you know awareness and to raise some money. And I, I say that because I, in my small um, my small, I don't want to say celebrity, but my small, you know, awareness of who I am as an artist, I did that. And I continue to be a part of that organization and Broadway cares at equity fights AIDS and anything that anyone asks me to do that I think I can give back and, and bring awareness to a cause or, um, a problem in this world or any of that. I think that that's something that we as artists should do, but not just artists, like we as humans should do that to give back because it's really the ripple effect that we put out into the world should be a positive one. And if you have the ability to volunteer in your community, do something that, um, that helps, I think we should do that. That is, that is how I was raised. That's my personality. And so, uh, I really do admire the artists who use their celebrity to set up foundations, scholarships, um, anything to help not just the arts, but, but um, the world. And God knows we need it right now. Well, Meredith, I want to leave you with, with one more question here. So sure. your whole family is incredibly talented and, and very gifted as performers. Your husband is a singer, actor, musician. Uh, we know, Shannon and I, we know your sons are so lucky to be able to <laughs> learn from two parents that are such accomplished professional performers. Um, and me and Shannon enjoy seeing videos of your, your son, Max, who we first met when he was really little, he's yeah. starting to sing and become a little performer himself. So I want to know how important do you think it is to expose them to the arts at their young age? And, and why do you think that's important? I think it's, you know, it's, it's not only just, um, and thank you for all your compliments. So sweet. And honestly, my husband and I have talked about this many times. We will always support our children in whatever, whatever is their jam. That's what we say, whatever is their thing. And I've always said this, if, if for some reason, you know, um, our, our two boys, you know, they were excelling at the game of chess. I've never played chess. I don't know how to play it. I would figure out how to support that passion because that's really what it's about. But when you have um, two artists uh, as parents, you're going to be surrounded by music and dance and and an appreciation of the arts and not just dance, but musicianship. And, and um, you know, I remember my fourth grade teacher took us to museums. So like art, art class and impressionism and all these incredible things that I feel like we need to honor in this society as not fluff or extra stuff or something that, oh, you, you know, cause I, I've heard this so many times about people who are artists or, um, or if, if somebody goes to the ballet or they go to the, the symphony with their children, they are exposing them to, um, incredible culture that we need to embrace in this country. We need to embrace in the world. And I know, um, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm making people aware of sometimes the duality that people have in terms of the arts. Sometimes when you're really successful, they're like, oh my God, I remember when they were just a kid in my community and, and you connect yourself to them. But if they're an artist who, you know, happens to never do anything in the entertainment industry, but they, they are an artist in their community, they are a teacher, there isn't such a reverence for it. And I want it to be equal. I want it to be both. I want there to be this um, understanding and respect for the arts in your household, in your community, all the way up to Broadway, because it's not about the recognition. It's about fueling um, the person as a whole and expanding them to culture and incredible expression, passion, all of that. So I, I, as you can tell, I've, I am very passionate about um, the arts in all respects as education and beyond. So um, I think the more people understand that, um, that side of it, the better, 
Does that, does <laughs> yeah, that answer your question? <laughs> of course. And you know, you're, you're 100% right about the arts not being something that's fluff. It's, it's essential to the experience that, that young children have. So I, yes, I commend you for all the work that you do, um, for, in that respect. Um, thank well, you. thank you so much for being with us here today, Meredith. It was an absolute treat. Everybody, I want to plug uh, Meredith's podcast, Confessions of an Actress. It's an amazing podcast. Everybody should go check it out. Um, thank you. <laughs> and Meredith, thank you so, so much. You are so welcome. Thank you so much for having me. The We Want Arts Podcast, hosted by me, Bridget Harrington, and produced and edited by my sister, Shannon Harrington. Original music by Shannon Harrington. If you haven't done so already, follow Broadway Arts Reach on Facebook and check out our website at broadwayartsreach.org. That's Broadway A-R-T-S-R-E-A-C-H. Also, follow my sister and I on our social media pages on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks so much for listening, and we hope you'll be back soon. 